Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question on Ask Dr. Nick is, are ketones the best fuel source for the brain? And I'm gonna say they are for sure, 100% ketones are the best fuel source for the brain. Um, and I'll show you that here uh, by as we walk through a paper discussing that. Okay, so what are ketones? Ketones are a type of fuel. So when we eat food, we get that in three main macronutrients. We get that in protein, in carbs, and in fat. Carbs and fat can be easily converted into usable energy for ourselves. Carbs become glucose, fats become fatty acids. Um, proteins that become amino acids will need to get converted into something else. They need to get converted into glucose um, or another, or, or maybe can be used directly um, uh, through like the tri-carboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. That's not too important. The main thing is that fats and carbs are the only thing that can truly be used as fuel source. Protein, when eaten in excess, will then be used as an additional fuel source by being converted into uh, glucose. Um, and a couple of them can go into ketones. And so ketones, now what is ketones? Ketones are a additional fuel source that is produced by the liver. And so when we're in a form of starvation, whether that be fasting or a fasted state, um, whether we're eating a bunch of uh, fats but not eating carbohydrates then our glucose levels our blood sugar levels drop and so our liver needs to produce ketone bodies from free fatty acids from fats that are just circulating around in our blood and then ketones are then able to get into the brain to supply the brain with energy fatty acids cannot do that directly because fatty acids are blocked out by the blood-brain barrier so really the brain can only use glucose and ketones for energy and so I'm going to show you here that I think ketones are the best usable source. And then we're going to talk just briefly about some ways that you can increase ketones in your blood um, through other sources besides changing your diet to a ketogenic diet, which is, again, using a high fat, adequate, adequate, adequate protein and very low carb diet. So this paper, let's get into it. So we have from the Frontiers in Nutrition. It's a, a December 2021 article. It's called Ketone Supplementation, Meeting the Needs of the Brain in an Energy Crisis. So they basically they talk about how uh, neurological disorders are associated with a deficit in brain energy. Uh, it can be either acute or chronic hypometabolism of glucose. Basically, the brain is not able to use glucose as well. Um, but ketones serve as the only alternative fuel source for the brain, and it can become the primary fuel in certain conditions when glucose is limited. Um, and so there's promising evidence that exogenous ketones can have a therapeutic strategy to meet the energy needs of the brain during these neurological disorders. And so preliminary evidence has shown that ketosis induced by exogenous ketones, basically taking ketones um, uh, that are that are formulated outside, you know, in the lab, can may attenuate damage and improve cognitive and motor performance in neurological conditions such as seizures, mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's, and neurotrauma like traumatic brain injury or um, spinal cord injury. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about here through the introduction. I want to just focus on this part right here. The brain is the most energetically demanding organ that accounts for over 20% of the total body energy usage, but it only weighs about 2% of the rest of the body, or 2% of the body. Um, the fundamental processes that occur in the brain, like neurotransmission, electrical communication, so that they can different brain areas can talk to each other, uh, occurring between neurons, they are very costly to perform, and they're susceptible to disruption from metabolic perturbances like inflammation, like stress, like a lot of other things, um, or you know, eating a poor inflammatory diet. Um, so again, glucose serves mostly as the primary fuel source for the brain in the adult brain. Um, but if we come down here, ketone metabolism is especially important and prevalent during development and infancy as ketones serve as this key substrate for um, lipid biosynthesis in um, while the baby is 
uh, still in mother's womb. Uh, as a neonate, the brain consumes up to 70% of the total energy needs, and almost half of that is derived from beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is a ketone body. Okay, beta-hydroxybutyrate is a main ketone body. Um, and so there's also a mild ketosis during breastfeeding. Okay, so right in here, neurotrauma from physical insults, such as concussion and traumatic brain injury, can compromise the integrity of neuronal cell membranes allowing dysregulated diffusion of ions, dissipation of membrane potential, which must be repaired to restore functionality. And therefore, basically, there's this energy crisis in neurotrauma, okay? Um, there is an energy crisis in other neurological disorders, which it says up there. And so basically, what we're talking about here is that neurodegeneration, neurodegenerative diseases, um, there is a notable effect in this poor glucose uptake in the brain. Okay, so in Alzheimer's, there's glucose metabolism is decreased. Um, in TBIs, there's a hyperglycosis, basically it's increased glucose uptake followed by a prolonged, very prolonged glucose hypometabolism because maybe not enough glucose is there or the glucose processing doesn't occur well enough. Uh, we know seizures have a problem with it as well. And so if we look at like therapeutic ketosis, we need to get on a ketogenic diet generally to get to therapeutic ketosis, but that's not always the case. Um, there are other ways to do that by taking exogenous ketones, which we'll talk about here in a sec. Um, so if we look at, um, again, that how glucose levels, if they drop generally, they are going to cause very bad symptoms of hypoglycemia. This extreme hypoglycemia, um, maybe like nervousness, sweating, tachycardia, hypertension, um, many things here. But when people are in ketosis, they don't experience those things because they're actually able to, their brain's able to function and use ketone bodies as energy rather than glucose, which is very low in the blood at the time. And so here we go. Uh, Cunane et al. solidified the role of ketones as not just a backup fuel, but perhaps a preferred fuel source for the brain. Um, so that ketones are pushed into the brain at a rate that is directly proportional to the concentration in the blood. So whatever the proportion is in the blood, they're going to go into the brain at that same rate. On the other hand, glucose is only pulled into the brain based on the metabolic requirement. So basically, the brain needs to be working in order for glucose to actually get into the brain. And so th that shows is that as the brain's working it needs more energy, it's like, I just need something, and it's gonna pull in glucose. But otherwise, the brain can happy it can uh, do well and uh, perfectly function well on ketone body metabolism. Okay, so, so here they're gonna talk about ex exogenous ketone supplementation, okay? Which we can go through the paper or I will, it'll be easier to just show you a picture here. So um, this is just an image from Google image that I found. It's pretty simple. There are four types of ketone supplementation. Um, like I said, the first thing, first order of business, um, is that a ketogenic diet, which is a high fat, adequate protein, low carbohydrate diet, can improve or increase keto ketones to a therapeutic level. And that therapeutic level is going to um, get more ketones into the brain for a better outcome, okay? So other ways that you can increase ketones is through supplements. So I've never heard of this, to be honest, not real ketones. Uh, so things that aren't real ketones that like, for instance, raspberry ketones are products that may use keto in the name, but they do not actually produce, they do actually increase ketones in the blood, in the body, in the blood and the body, sorry. Okay, so that's just one thing. Okay, this one, ketone oils. So like MCT oil or MCT oil powder, Okay, Keto, this is like coconut oil. Coconut oil has MCT, it's medium chain triglycerides. They're just shorter fatty acids. These shorter fatty acids are more likely to go to the liver and to get converted into ketones. And so you could take one to two to four tablespoons of coconut oil per day or get MCT oil that's a little bit more expensive, that's you know processed MCT oil, and take that and you can increase ketone levels. Now it doesn't do it at a very high degree or very fast degree. It's more of like a long lasting energy and it might only increase ketone levels to a certain marker 
that is not truly therapeutic keto, uh, ketosis unless you already eat a generally high fat diet or low carbohydrate diet. Ketone salts. Okay, so ketone salts are basically ketones like beta hydroxybutyrate, that's that one form, um, and it's bounded or bonded to salts. So it's bonded to magnesium or potassium or sodium or calcium. And ketone salts are, again, it's direct beta hydroxybutyrate. But, and the ketone salt helps with absorption, okay? But at the same time, the beta-hydroxybutyrate uh, attached to the ketone salt, it might not be in the correct form. So maybe you only need like, like you know, my right hand is not the same as my left hand. They are mere images, but they're opposites, right? And so the body only uses the right form of beta-hydroxybutyrate. And if you have both kinds of beta-hydroxybutyrate on these ketone salts, right and left. The left one is just non-existent, doesn't really do anything for the body, but the right one does. And so that's the analogy of ketone salts. You're getting a certain amount of ketone salts, but you can only use half of them, okay? And lastly, you have ketone esters, or also kind of termed ketone monoesters, and these are raw ketones, okay? So basically it's just beta-hydroxybutyrate in the and monoester is the ideal because it's just that one hand form. Um, if you can get ketone monoesters, they are the fastest way to improve therapeutic ketosis. Ketone salts can do it, but you just need to take more. Ketone esters are also more expensive. Um, but you can actually take ketone esters three times a day to stay at a therapeutic ketosis all throughout the day. Um, and that can, again, improve a lot of outcomes. So for instance, as we go back to the paper here, we can see that there is benefits for exogenous keto supplementation or a ketogenic diet on things like seizure disorders, um, mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, as we mentioned before. We know that neurotrauma or specifically traumatic brain injury can definitely have benefits from the ketogenic diet. Um, and then spinal cord injury and stroke. Both of these as well can be you know, we can use exogenous ketones to promote recovery, promote healing of the brain in these areas. So let's just review here. The ketogenic diet, which gives your body more ketones and the brain can use this, these ketones as more of a preferred source of energy and therefore improve efficiency for the brain by making more energy, more ATP, so that the brain, which is the um, most expendable um, or the the largest, the smallest organ with the most energy requirements um, can therefore get the energy it needs through ketone bodies. Um, besides the ketogenic diet, you can also take exogenous ketones through multiple forms. Ketone monoesters may be the best, but they're the most expensive. Um, ketone salts are not bad. And then MCT oil or coconut oil can increase general ketones, but maybe not to a therapeutic level. So I hope you found this one interesting because there are always a lot of questions on ketones and the ketogenic diet and is it best for me or is there other, other ways that I can improve uh, my health around it. And so I just wanted to put this uh, article out there and this video. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. If you have any questions for, um, for any questions or suggestions, please leave them below. And I would love to hear um, more of a commentary if we can uh, because this is just some really interesting stuff and there are a lot of a lot of good evidence on ketogenic diets and ketone bodies for brain health so hope everyone had enjoyed this one uh, again have a great day and stay healthy